Hey everyone, in this video I want to show you guys how to copy files between two machines using the SCP command. Now most likely your Ubuntu machine will already have SCP installed, but if for some reason you don't, um, all you have to do is install the openssh-client package. And you can do that with the command sudo apt install ssh open ssh-client. And that's all you have to do. I've already got it installed, so I already have the the SCP command. Um, so, you know, if you don't have SCP, just run the install open ssh-client, and you should have both SSH as well as SCP at that point. Anyways, to get started with SCP, it's actually a pretty simple command. All you do is you type in SCP, then the first parameter that you give it is the source or the um, location of the file that you want to copy. So the, the way you're going to format that is it's going to be username at uh, source underscore, we'll just call the source host, colon, and then path to file. Then the second argument is going to be the same exact format. You're going to provide the uh, username at and then dest underscore host colon path to file. So let me explain this real quick. Um, so obviously we're going to be copying the file either from our machine to another machine or we're going to copy the file from another machine to our machine. Um, so the first parameter is going to be the location of the file uh, that we want to copy. Uh, so if the file is on a remote machine, you would provide a username to connect to that machine. And this is the same username that you would use to connect to that machine using SSH because under the hood SCP just uses SSH. So you provide uh, a username that is obviously configured on that box uh, and then you do the at symbol, then the actual host name or IP address of the machine. So if you have DNS set up then you can use the actual host name. If you don't you're going to have to provide the IP address. Then you do colon and then the path to the file. So that's going to be the full path. Um, not just the relative path but the absolute path. And then the destination is going to be the same exact format so if the destination's on a remote machine, it's going to be, you know, your, a username on that machine, then the at symbol, then the IP address or host name of the destination machine, and then the absolute path to that file. So let's go ahead and get started with a few examples. Um, so in the first example, I want to show you guys how to copy a file from another machine to this machine. Okay, and the other machine I'm going to copy it from is going to be this guy right here. And the file I want to copy, I'll just make a quick file real quick. Uh, actually, we'll copy this notes.txt. And let me note down the absolute path to the file. So it's going to be slash home slash Sanjeev and then notes.txt. So the, oops. So the actual, um, the way the command's going to be formatted is we're going to do SCP then the source of the file. So the, the file that we want to copy is located on another machine and that's this machine right here. Um, so we're going to have to point it to that machine. Now I need to have an account on this machine that I can SSH to and I have the Sanjeev account. I have the credentials for that user so I can SSH to that actual user. And just to test if you actually have uh, credentials on the machine, just do SSH and then um, the username of that machine at, uh, and then the IP address of that machine. So the IP address of this guy is 192.168.0.6. And so it logged me in. So that shows me that I do have a valid account on that uh, machine so I can log into it. So SCP should work just fine. So I'm going to use the Sanjeev user to SCP and copy that file. So the syntax is going to be SCP then the username I want to log in as, and we confirm Sanjeev works, then at, and then the IP address of the machine. And once again, the IP address of this machine is 192.168.0.6. So I'm going to put that in. And if you have DNS set up, you can always use the host name. Then I'm going to do colon. And then now I have to provide the full path to the file. Um, so if we recall, the path to the file is slash home slash Sanjeev and then notes.txt. So slash home, slash Sanjeev, slash notes.txt. 
Then the second argument of the command is going to be where I want to copy the file to. So I want to copy the file to this machine. So I don't actually have to put in, you know, a username and the IP address because it's this machine and I'm already logged into it. So I can just provide the full path. Um, actually, I can provide the full path or the relative path. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put it in the root directory. And because I'm going to put it in the root directory, we're going to need sudo um, so we can access the root directory. And when you do that, it's going to ask um, uh, if you want to connect to that host. Just hit, just do yes. And then you have to put in the password for the Sanjeev user. So I'm going to enter that in and it copied the file over. So if we go to the home directory or the root directory and take a look at that, you can see we were able to copy the notes.txt file. And the only reason I needed sudo access was because I wanted to copy it to the root directory. If I just wanted to copy it to my home directory, then I wouldn't need sudo. And it's gonna copy it over, you see? So that's how we copy files from another machine to this machine. Um, now keep in mind that I'm not providing a parameter to um, rename the file. So I'm just providing a location and it's gonna copy the file. But if I run that same command, Um, but this time I actually name the file. I can say, uh, we'll call this copied file .txt. Now it's gonna copy this notes.txt file to this location and then it's gonna rename it copied file.txt. So now if I take a look, we should see copied file.txt. So you can rename whatever file you're copying um, just by providing a name in the destination portion of it. Uh, another thing to note is that if we already have a file called, um, if we already have a file with a certain name like notes.txt, and then we copy another file from a remote machine um, to this machine with the same exact name, it will overwrite it. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. So make sure that you're not overwriting any files by accident. It's not going to give you a warning uh, of any kind. It's just going to overwrite it. All right, so I showed you guys how to copy a file from one machine to another um, from this machine. I'm going to now show you how to copy a file from this machine to another machine, uh, to the other machine. So the syntax of the command is going to be roughly the same, except the source and destinations are going to be flipped. So I'm going to make a file. We'll call this um, Joe's Files. Um, so we've got this file called Joe's Files. And if we want to copy this to the other machine again, we do the SCP command, and remember the first argument is always going to be the source. And since the source is now on this machine, we don't have to do the um, username at blah. We can just provide the path. So I can do, uh, let me get the path. So I can do SCP slash home slash Joe slash Joe's files, and that would be providing the absolute path, or we can just do uh, Joe's files and that's going to be uh, the relative path um, because we're already in slash home slash Joe so we can use either one. So we do, I'll just leave it as the relative path but just make sure you guys understand you can do both. So that's the source and we want to copy to the remote machine so that's going to be the destination. So we got to have a username um, for that machine or an account on that machine then the IP address uh, then we do colon and then the path we want to copy it to. So let's say we want to copy it to um, slash home. Actually, let's say we want to copy it to slash var. No, let's just copy it to slash home slash Sanjeev. Um, so that's going to copy the file over. And it's not asking for a password because I, I set up the SSH key now, so it's not going to ask for a password. But if you haven't done that, it's going to ask for a password every time you copy a file. Anyways, if we go to my home directory and just do an ls, we can see here that we've copied over Joe's files. And just like the example before, we can actually rename the file as we copy. So if we're going to run the same command, but instead we'll call this uh, Joe's 
copied files.txt, it's going to copy that same file over, but it's going to do it uh, by renaming the file as well. So it's copied the file over, and if we check this directory, we see that we have Joe's copied files.txt. I do want to show you one more uh, trick if you're not familiar with it. Uh, let's say let's say we want to copy another file um, from that remote machine to this machine. Uh, so let's do uh, from that other machine, and that's going to be 192.168.0.6 colon slash, and let's just copy. Um, let, let me get a file to copy over. Let's copy the script.x.c file. Uh, now when we select the destination, you know, it's going to be this machine, so normally we'd provide it uh, a path, so we can provide the absolute path uh, to wherever we want it to be, or we can provide the relative path. Uh, usually, a lot of the times, you're already in the directory you want to copy the file to, so an easy trick to tell the machine to copy it to the current directory you're located at is just to do the dot command. So this is saying the destination, you want it to be wherever we are in the directory structure. So right now, um, this tilde means we're in our home directory, so this will copy it to our current location, which is the home directory. And if we do that, it should have copied it over, and yep, you can see it's copied it over. And if we move to a different directory, let's say we move to, let me make another directory, and we cd into test, and we run that same command, since we're now in the test directory, this is going to just copy it straight into the test uh, directory, or wherever we are specifically. So if we check that, now it's in this folder. So this is just a quick little way of copying it to a specific, um, to the specific location where you currently are in the directory structure. So I showed you guys how to copy files. Now let me show you guys how to copy a directory. Um, a lot of times you want to copy an entire folder over. Um, so to do that, all we have to do is make sure you pass in the dash R flag. Um, if you don't do that, it's going to say uh, we're trying to copy a directory and it's going to error out. So this tells it that we're going to copy over a directory instead of a file. Um, so let's copy a specific folder. Um, so let's say we have, um, let me make sure I copy a folder that has actual files in it. So let me check the documents. There's nothing in there. I'll just make a few files. Okay. So we're going to copy the documents folder. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to provide the source which is going to be the remote machine. And then where do we want to copy it to? So I could just do dot if I want to copy it to this location or I can provide the exact path. So I'm going to just provide the exact path. So I want home slash Joe. And yeah, I just want it to be in my home directory. So we do that. And if we go to our home directory, and we do an ls, we can see we have the documents folder that we copied over. And if we check inside the documents folder, it should have all the files and all the folders the original documents folder had. Um, one more thing to keep in mind. Uh, Instead of copying an entire folder over, say you wanted to copy the entire content of a folder. So let's say a folder has a specific number of files and you just want to copy the files over and not that folder. An easy way to copy all the files within a directory is to use the asterisks. So let me show you guys how to use that. And uh, I'm going to I'm going to delete everything here. So we'll just do rm file one, file two file three. So we have this documents folder on our machine that's empty. And I'm going to copy the contents of this machine's documents folder, um, all the files in there into this documents folder. 
Um, so it's the same three files that we just deleted, file one, file two, file three. And the way to do that is, let's just do SCP, provide the source, then provide the path. Okay, so we're in the folder that we wanna copy all the contents to, but how do we copy the files that are within that folder without copying the folder itself? And the easy way to do that is just to do that. So what that's gonna tell the machine is copy everything in that path. So it's gonna find the documents directory and it's gonna take all the files in the documents directory and copy all of those. And then we're gonna provide a path. Uh, so we wanna just send it right here because we're already in the documents directory. Uh, so once we do that, if we look at what it copied over. So it copied the three files and not the actual directory itself. Uh, now I do wanna point out one neat trick about the SCP command. So you notice how we've always been either copying from the machine that we're on or copying to the machine that we're on. But we can actually copy a, a file from another machine and send it to a completely different machine. So we're basically copying files between two machines that we're not even logged into. And we can just do that with uh, the same command. We would just do SCP, you provide the user, let's just say user and then at, we'll call this machine one, uh, then you know the path, you provide whatever path and then the destination would be a specific username on uh, machine two, whatever IP address that is, and then the path on the mach that machine. So you can copy it from to uh, copy it from another machine and send it to a totally different machine and not even use this machine at all. As long as you have a a valid user on both machines, you can do that. Um, so that's pretty much everything I wanted to show you guys for the SCP command. It's a very simple command, but it's something that you're going to use a lot of.